Have your seat. God bless you. A round of applause for them. <laughs> Praise the Lord. You know the reason I call the brothers? Many times it is very easy for us when you see a single lady, you point at her, you see her, she never marry. Even the single brothers will be pointing at her, she never marry. Not knowing that you are the reason that lady is not married. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. You must come to the realization that the way God has created the two of us, God has created us separately, differently, in our thoughts, in our actions, in our reasoning. Praise the Lord. Although the modern society has equated us, and even the women, the sisters, they are promoting it, equality. Something like this. All, this, that's all, all those slogans, you see it everywhere. Equality, equality, gender, this gender, that gender. That's what they put in their head. Praise the Lord. Sisters, women, I would like to use women now. The way women have been designed, the way they have been decorated, is that they want comfort and security. Sisters, if I'm lying, say I am lying. You know. Praise the Lord. They want what? Comfort and what? Security. If they don't see this comfort and security in a man, they will not be willing to go on that journey with him. Praise the Lord. So you can see that that responsibility is more of men than even the sisters. But it's just that when it comes to the issue of marriage, the society is not nice to the sisters. It's very easy for us. We, quick, we, can, it's very, we are very quick to, to, to count the number of years that they have on, in their, uh, on their head. She's 30, she never married. She's 35, she never married. She's 40, she never married. But when a brother who is 35, 40, even 45, they'll just say, hey, maybe he's taking his time. Praise the Lord. Maybe he's taking his time, not knowing that he's just an irresponsible man. Praise the Lord. So we need to understand that the way God has created us, God has created us differently. If women do not see that security that their, that their heart is yearning after, if they don't see it in you, they can tell you that I'm a, I'm a sister, I don't like worldly things, I just know it's a lie. That sister is lying. Even my old grandmother wants comfort and security as a woman. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. If they don't see it in their future, if they don't see it in their future, they are not willing to go. And at the same time, sisters, try as much as possible to reduce your standards. I beg. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Try as much as possible to reduce your standard. Rome was not built in a day. It doesn't have a car now. I mean, I cannot allow, I, mean, I cannot carry my first child on, on a bike. I cannot carry my first child inside Keke Marua. See, all those things, they are wishful thinking. No? They are just wishful thoughts. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. The fact that your first child starts with Kekemarua does not mean you will carry your second child in Kekemarua. Your second child can come and you will go and pick him or her in the hospital with a Lamborghini. That's the kind of God we serve. Lower your standard. Lower your standard. In the place where I work, I have a lot of young people, singles who are not, you know, you know, still believing God. But in the course of their conversations, you will hear statements like, it is better to cry in a Lamborghini 
Orange Rover than to cry in Keke Marua. That's a lady talking. What does that mean? It means even if he's beating me, I don't care. As long as that money is there. That's the interpretation. And even you, the sisters, you, the sisters, most times, most times, in your thoughts, in your imagination, you want something good, but you don't know that you have a responsibility and you have a role to play to ensure that these good things come to you and it becomes yours permanently. Many of you, you are even confused in your choice. You are confused in your choice. You want a man that has Davido vibes, but as James to with a touch of Dusio Yeko, it's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. You will hear words like, I, I, I like crazy guys, so. No, these are statements that people make. Who will marry now? Now that I've never worn jeans before, it doesn't even have sneakers. Praise the Lord. I want a man that will take me out always, that will do this, that will do that. See, if you marry a man that is always outside, it is certain that you will end outside. That is a fact. Because he's a man of the outside. You can't meet him outside and you expect him to be coming home every night. So you don't have to be confused in your choice. If you want to marry a Christian, marry a Christian. If you want to marry an unbeliever, please marry an unbeliever. If you want to marry an unbeliever, marry an unbeliever. And this goes to the brothers as well. Marry an unbeliever if you want to marry an unbeliever. It means that is who you are. Don't force things to happen. Don't. You cannot force things to happen. When you look around, you look around and you hear things like, eh, I like him, I, I, I like him, it's just that, it's just that he still smokes, he still smokes, and, you know, that's the only thing, you know, every other thing about him is fine, every other thing about him is fine, it's a lie, and you know that it's not true, that, what, what that thing that you're telling yourself is not true. Is an occasional drinker. He only drinks occasionally. Come on, what are you saying now? What are you saying? There's nothing like okay. Is, does he drink? Does he take alcohol? Yes. Yes or no? There's nothing like he's an occasional drinker. One occasion can lead you to the hospital. That's just that single occasion. One occasion can lead you out of that marriage. And marriage is not a game. Mm -mm. It's not a game. I don't know how easy it is for people to go in, come out, go in, come out. You hear that some people have married two or three within the space of how many lives do you have that you are marrying two or three times? In this one life that you come, you are marrying two or three times. There was a popular actor that... that it was even the first person to, to post their breakup with his wife. He posted it on the Instagram. Three days ago or two days ago, we started hearing gist again. We started hearing gist again that he has picked up another lady. That lady too got married to a Ghanaian uh, somebody. She broke up with that one. So uh, a, a divorcee is marrying another divorcee. Ask me, what would they, what kind of children would they give birth to? Divorcians. 
And when you look at these people, obviously you will know what they want in each other, what they are looking for. Yes, the guy is well built. He's handsome. And obviously you will know that that is the only point of attraction. And when you look at the lady as well, when you look at the lady, our glass shape, although they are working it out now, they are removing their ribs, that judgment day will be funny. Because God will ask some questions. I gave you, how many ribs do women have? Seven, Abby. I gave you seven. How come you are bringing four? Praise the Lord. And I, I will be glad to listen to that kind of response. <laughs> Daddy, I want my bum bum to come out. <laughs> Praise the Lord. I did it because I, I want my bum bum to come out. If you were the father to that kind of child, what would you do? So you can see what is attracting them to each other. And that is what is happening in the house of God. That's why when you go to some churches these days, you have a lot of polluted guys attend those church. Unfortunately, unfortunately, many of our sisters in a place like this, hearing the, this kind of word of God, who have undergone deliverance and all of that will still leave a place like this and go to that kind of church because that is where their speck attends. Praise the Lord. Now, <laughs> when that speck makes them a specimen, they will come back here. And they become a deliverance candidate. And people will start sweating. Come out! Out! You didn't, you didn't, you did not listen. You were in a place that God has positioned you. But because you were following speck, 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 up and down, you've landed yourself in the wrong place. Please, I have taken my time to analyze so many things. I believe this conversation, it's possible it lasts about two weeks so that we will have time to express ourselves. We will have time to express ourselves. I pray God will help us in the name of Jesus. Unfortunately, today, I'm unable to go into the message. But with a few words of mine this morning, I hope I've been able to convince you and not confuse you that it is right to open your eyes and marry right. God bless you. What I actually have here today is what I titled cost of marriage, but we can't go in into the message today. With what we've heard this morning, I want us to ask questions. If you have questions, we'll be glad to look at the questions. We have seasoned marriage counselors in the house. Let's celebrate God in their lives, please. If you have those questions, you can stand up, let the mic go around, ask questions. It could be as a result of choice. What are the things you see in this person? What are the things you should look out for? Where are we going in marriage? You know, things like that. It wasn't like this before, but when we got in, I started seeing these signs, these changes, and all of that. If you have any question, just signify by raising your hand. Okay, he has a question. 
Okay, he has a question. Okay, you can go ahead. All right, um, good morning, church. Good morning. Um, good morning. My name is Obina. Okay, the question I would like to ask is, I know not all marriages can be perfect. Or I don't know if all marriages are supposed to be perfect. I've not been in one before, so I don't really know. But my question is, in if, if I'm coming from the angle of, okay, all marriages are not supposed to be perfect, we like, should I consider mood swing as a toxic as a toxic trait in a relationship or in marriage? Someone that occasionally has mood swings. All of a sudden, you just, like, you talk the previous night, you next morning all of a sudden you are just being praise the lord praise the lord okay i i, I think uh, this will help me it's like you are you are pushing putting your eyes into what i have here praise the lord it's like i opened this book and you saw it okay cost of marriage i i i was able to divide it into two pre-wedding cost, pre-wedding cost, and post-wedding cost. So one of the post-wedding costs, like you mentioned, I put it here that handling emotions, praise the Lord, handling emotions, and mood swing is an emotional thing. So that is why you must be mature enough to go into marriage. Marriage is not for people that cannot take nonsense. It is for people that can take rubbish. Praise the Lord. Are we trying to understand that? I will not force us to understand though, but I only say what we need to know. Marriage is not for people that cannot take nonsense. So that's why I was begging the sisters earlier that please bring down your standards. The fear of most sisters is that uh, so that it will not just turn me into, into uh, a, a, a full-time housewife. It will not just turn me into I, I will be in a, in a bid to keep fighting for your rights. You don't fight for your rights in marriage. Your right comes to you by being responsible. And both of you will be mature enough to understand that. Do you get what I'm trying to say, sir? So you must be able to handle emotions. Yes, if you are the if you are the the mature type, you will know that there will be times that people will like to keep to themselves. But in marriage, it is very risky. Your mood swing should not be that long. Your mood swing should not be long. You are on mood swing, mood swing, mood swing. One day, two days, three days. Then it means you are di- you are already dining with the devil. If your mood swing is that long, what is it that you are thinking about? Are you God? You that want to solve the problem of everybody in the world. So try as much as possible to reduce your mood swing time. And even that thing that is making you have mood swing, now you have a partner. Share it with your partner. If truly is your husband, if truly she's your wife, share that problem with him or her. Then you are fine. One thing I know about sharing thoughts is when you bring it out, when you share it with somebody you trust and love, that problem is solved like 50 percent is that okay by you sir so try as much as possible to share that thing that is making your mood to swing i pray god will help us in the name of jesus do you have another question so let uh, pastor leko pastor lumide pastor chooks get ready as they're asking questions because <laughs> Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. My name is Nonsu. Okay. So, um, you, you said reduce your standards. Um, so, my own perception is that we're all different, right? Yeah. And the goal of marriage is the fulfillment that comes with the marriage. It's, it's not just getting married. So, are you saying settling for less is acceptable 
just so that you can be say, okay, this person is married. I think to so an extent, I understand what you're saying, but I think more clarification should be done to that. Okay. Because when you say settle, because people have perception of what they expect the future to look like. Mm. And so that you don't get to that point and you take a step back and then there's regret. Mm. And when it comes so early, because if, if you have an idea of the things that you expect to be having in your first year of marriage mm. or your second year of marriage, and then you get married and those things are not a reality. Mm. Very early in the marriage, you, it, it causes friction. And the foundation is very important. So, yeah, please just clarify. Thank Praise you. the Lord. I, I, will, I will answer then. Pastor Lekotu will comment. He will make his comment. Okay. I will use my, myself as an example. Not, not, not the area of marriage now. But if possible, I can add marriage to it. I want to use um, my, my uh, academics as an example. So that's why, number one, you must be able to visualize you understand and when you visualize you have short-term goals you have medium-term goals and you have long-term praise the Lord you have those three goals in place when I was seeking admission into the higher institution I said I made up my mind within myself and my grades in secondary school got into my head that is it that is it that university or no school? Is it that Unilag, OAU or no school? Praise the Lord. Year one, it didn't work out. Year two, it didn't work out. I was still at home. Year three, it didn't work out. I was still at home. Year four, it didn't work out. I was still at home. Praise the Lord. Until I decided, I was advised by somebody anyway. And I followed that decision. I obtained a polytechnic form. The exam, and it, just, it was just as if they were waiting for me there. With all the go to university, go to all the school, all the two schools I loved so much, and uh, admission did not work out. This one, I did not even see anybody. So somebody that called me, that said, your name is number three on the list, so it's not the newspaper. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I gained admission into a polytechnic. Praise the Lord. To the glory of God today, I don't just have HND, I have other certifications of higher study. Have I achieved my goal to the glory of God? Yes. Do you understand what I'm trying to say? So your start point is not your end point. So the most important thing in life is that start but have your goals it's not as if we're telling you to throw away your visions so you must be able to visualize see that vision in that person if you don't see that vision that's what i'm trying to say if you don't see the vision in that person don't go but don't see the vision that you are seeing who would see dr lukoya in his days then his younger age then and say that this guy will be the general of Asia that will be recognized all over the world what they were what Pastor Mrs. Shade only saw then was a good choir master who was just a brilliant young man. Praise the Lord. But were those good resources, yes, good resources, a brilliant young man, first class, you understand, PhD student or graduate at that time. And yes, I know that the future is there. But they did not start with this glamour, did they? No. Praise the Lord. I believe you understand. So that's the way it is. Pastor Nicole. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Married decision is a personal responsibility. One of, the, the, one of the problem many marriages are facing is that we've attributed the ritualism to marriage. If somebody wants to marry, he's waiting on God. Successful marriage is not a product of prayerfulness. 
You can be prayerful. I have a free marriage. Someone that is not praying can have a good marriage. God is a neutral. When it comes to anything that happens to a man in life, it's a choice. And what God do is to give you people around you to guide you. God will not force anybody on anyone. You make your choice and you ask God to lead you. When you have standard, there are different standards. Nobody is asking you. It is a standard. The most essential standard is marry somebody that have good relationship with God. Don't marry a devil candidate so that you will not beat you and break your head. Don't marry somebody that is going to wear so that you will lead you to wear. No, but our standard is marry somebody that is doing the will of God. Somebody that you know, you confirm. Don't marry a stranger so that you will not end up in danger. Marry somebody that is doing the will of God. That is not our standard. Every other standard is no real. What is the other standard? Um, my standard is somebody that is tall and handsome. Somebody that has muscle. Somebody that has beer. Somebody that like to play with beer. If you, they don't have teddy beer for you, that is your problem. The marriage is not a teddy beer competition. There is no standard that all these standards you are setting. That is what Pastor is saying. Look at all these or realistic standards. Do you know why a guy told me? One man said, I'm frustrated every time I saw, I see my wife. She's not the kind of person I want to marry. I said, Your kind of person is in heaven. Maybe where you die, you got to marry Jesus. Every woman be has weaknesses. That is where emotional intelligence come to play. Make your choice, accept your choice, and go with your choice. But the day you are waiting for already, that is AJ. AJ does not exist. You can see me and say, I like the way Bolo call is. Ask my wife. We are coping with each other. Yeah. What am I saying? Every woman be has weaknesses. Pray, allow God to lead you. Make your choice. And with the help of God, and grow in marriage. But for you to be looking for somebody like, like Pastor Yadeboye. Eh, Pastor Kumuyi, eh, Bishop Edu, Edu. Ah, when they were starting, they were not like that. You, they train yourself to be like that. So you can start small and become big. Please don't marry an unbeliever. Don't lower that standard. However, and lower that standard. Stop looking for somebody that have I can. Where you don't have I can? It's a rubbish standard. Somebody that doesn't have I can yesterday and I can have I can tomorrow. Eh, stop looking for somebody that have to wait to lack. There are so many lack. Black professor that don't have that have a fair marriage. Marry somebody that is the will of God. Is that clear? So standard, ethics standard does not matter. Praise the Lord. Somebody that was a former speaker of us of assembly. There was a time she was a yard dresser. Do you remember her name? I don't need to mention her name. She was a yard dresser by coincidence, by connection. Situation can change. Is it clear? Don't write off anybody. Don't say because she's slim tomorrow. Somebody that is slim tomorrow can be fat tomorrow. Don't say because he has no shape. Shape come as time goes on. The former first lady of Nigeria. If you see her so many years ago, you will not marry her. But then come. Everybody will go in after her. Why? Because when money comes, this shame. So share your mindset. Everybody has potential. Everybody can become better. Don't allow the healthy standard. Have your own plan. Marry somebody that is going somewhere. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Okay, we have two, two other questions. Wait, oh, wait, oh. It's not a guy's party. We are the sisters. Uh -huh. Don't worry, pardon. Let us, let us hear from them. So that they will not think we just formed a meeting on their head. Let's, let's hear. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. My name is Catherine or Chiamaka. Okay. And my question is You're saying we should marry or settle down with someone less? Mm -mm. Mm -mm. We should not use standard. We should not use standard, like so far as the person has a zeal. But we've forgotten that not everybody in this life is opportune or destined to make it in life. And we have to look at the criteria because some people, they, they don't have the connections. They don't have the criteria to making it. Please, can, so, can somebody help you with that August Sabino's look? 
So what do we do in this case? And secondly, I am with somebody that does not want me to work and he pays me monthly. But I have that zero. I'm like, with all my qualifications and the school I went to, what's the point of me sitting at home? And he wants, like, anything I ask, he gives me. But how do I make him understand that I want to work? Mm. Okay. Okay. So, you don't want to be an Oga's wife. <laughs> Praise the Lord. <laughs> me Oga. <laughs> Sorry, so let, let's come, let's start with your first question. So your first question says, uh, we should not, sorry, remind me. Uh -huh, you made a statement, yes, I remember. Now. You made a statement that it's not everybody that is destined to make it in life. No, that's not true. Everyone that you see here and that you will meet on the road, is destined to be great. God will never create a failure. It's when we got here on earth that people started manipulating destiny. That's one. Another thing is that people themselves decided decision now. Because the fact that somebody is not making it or did not make it was as a result of the choice that the person made. That's why I ask the brothers to stand up first so that you will see them and pray for them and let them know that there are still some kind of prayers that they need to pray. Praise the Lord. Why? Because they must make it. It's a must. They must make it. So you can hear now, you can hear what the sister is saying. Hey, you know that I told you they like comfort and what security comfort and security so take away that notion everybody is destined to be great but the question is when are they going to be great you don't know the time but God is a miracle working God Pastor Leko mentioned it now he said somebody who was a hairdresser at some point in time, eventually became a senator in Abuja. How did it happen? You've seen cases of many grass to grace. Around, if you look around, you will see. Praise the Lord. The second question, Pastor Lumide will answer that question. That uh, with all our qualifications, the guy insists that she stays at home or gas wife she wants to travel the private jet is waiting she, on monday morning she can wake up and go to spa you know paint her nails give her a proper massage come back home the maid has prepared the steward now not maid the steward has prepared correct food and all of that that she doesn't like that kind of lifestyle She's uh, she doesn't uh, want to be a mere guy again. A mere guy again, yes. Okay. She has all the certifications. Why can't she walk? Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Now, um, when Pastor was talking earlier, he mentioned uh, Praise the Lord. So you mentioned earlier about um, pre-wedding cost, and one of the things you mentioned was uh, managing emotions. Now, the man that doesn't want the wife to work could be as a result of uh, different things, could be as a result of experiences. Maybe he has seen the experiences whereby women have been abused in the office or at work, and uh, different other things. It could be um, a person who has uh, a little bit of uh, jealousy and doesn't want his wife out of his presence. So a lot of things could have contributed to that decision. Now, because you are qualified and you feel you should work, sincerely, I don't, um, I, I'm not in the school of thought that says women should not work. I believe women should work because this life, anything can happen at any time. So I'm in the school of thought that women should work. Now, if uh, your husband is saying don't work 
then there is a way you can uh, discuss with the person, make the person see reason to you, to you walking. And uh, if by the time you start um, expressing it gently, telling him, you know, analyzing things to him, at the end of the day, he might not tell you to take your certificates and go and look for work. He might say, okay, look, since you are insisting, I want to establish something for you. Praise the name of the Lord. So there are different ways in which, but you have to be gentle about it. You have to be prayerful and you have to be persistent, but not nagging. Praise the name of the Lord. That's uh, a contribution laced with a lot of wisdom. You have to be gentle about it. One thing about men is that men don't like they don't like it when you drag issues with them. Men have ego. Yet, they are the softest. Praise the Lord. Do you understand now? Men are softer than the women. But they have ego. They have pride. So they don't like it when you get involved in arguments. This is what I want. It's my right. I must do it. I tell people, it will shock you that it is Remi Tinumbo that is controlling the whole of Nigeria. Praise the Lord. Maybe where she's touching Baba's head in the inner room. I'm on the busy immigration. I don't just like his face. And before you know it, somebody will just wake up one day and say, the immigration uh, head has been sacked. They, meanwhile, they concluded this matter in the bedroom. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. And you can see the way the life of Solomon went. That because he opened himself to a lot of women, they turned his heart away from God. That's the person that the Bible says the wisest man in the Bible. A woman turned, women turned his heart away from God. Wisdom. Just be gentle about it. I pray God will help you in Jesus' name. Okay. And uh, my wife wants to talk. Don't talk. Oh. Don't, don't say what I will not like. Oh. Don't, don't ask me the question I will not be able to answer. Oh. Praise God. So I think um, the first question I was going to ask is, are you married already or you are still single? Like, the situation, are you married already or you are still single? You are not married yet. You are in a relationship. Okay, so I have a question. And the question is, now, talking mm -hmm. about not working, working, what if you are in a relationship and you and your husband-to-be or your wife-to-be had, um, like... You concluded, you told him that you would walk, like you will walk. Then after getting married, now tells you that you are not working. As a lady, what are you going to do? And you're a believer. You know that you already talked about it before, during the courtship. I'm going to work. He said, fine, you walk, you do this. Then getting married now tells you that, oh, you are not working. Oh, I'll be sending money to you, that kind of thing. What are you going to do? Pastor Chooks, please come. Ah. Praise the Lord. Where's mommy Adesua? Okay, she has gone out. Oh, okay. Um, there, there is always a cause to everything. And I mean cause, C-A-U-S-E. -E, you know, it is possible that in the time of the courtship because of insistence from your own side the man said okay you will but now that you are inside it's not telling you you will not now what you need to do wisdom is profitable for direction you need to ask okay what is the reason why you don't want me actually to walk you know it's, it's a union by the time there is a communication 
Some men, the reason why they don't even want their wife to work is because probably they think that when that woman begins to grow, either in work or business, you don't have more time for your husband. It takes that time from him. And some could be health challenge. Some also as a result could, of childbirth and all of that. Yes. So there are there are certain experiences that one has had, you know. I know a man, anytime I meet him, he carries his water bottle, he carries his food. He's a very wealthy man, and his wife is established. He still tells us that with all what his wife is doing, she is the one that must prepare his breakfast, mm. that it is her responsibility. We told him that it's a lie. You must have mates and people staying with you that should be doing that. He said, no, that is our wife. It's his wife. That if the wife must hand it over to even a relative or a younger sister staying with them, that he must take permission from him. You understand? So people have their reasons so it's not don't take it that okay because the man you are now into the marriage the man is changing no and you now take it as a bad as that like the man is trying to de or the man deceived you now you become humble and now say okay honey let's know so that we can talk it let's negotiate out of this it will work mm. praise the lord Hallelujah. so just do it like that yeah. then um for the first question that was asked, another thing that causes mood swing is there are certain hormones mm. in us, especially women. Yeah. At times, that mood swing cannot be explained. Yes. So if as a man, you want to really know at times what is causing your wife not to be happy or change suddenly by force, forget it. That mm. means you will correct to the end. So when she is on that mood or you are on that mood, as a guy, you people should learn at times, give yourself a certain gap, a certain space. Later, you can come back together. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Ah, she still has a question. So let's, Sister Funke wants to ask a question. Okay, no, it's not a question per se. Okay. It's actually about the issue of working or not working. You see, um, I'm going to be talking to you sincerely, you know. There's a way, um, as an adult, when you attain that adulthood and you're supposed to be working and earning and, you know, have your own life, generally, and you don't have it and you're dependent on another person, you see, there's a way... It, it doesn't give you fulfillment. It doesn't give you fulfillment. There's a way it kills you on the inside. I mean, I hope, I hope other women, other ladies here, they understand what I'm saying. <laughs> you see, it's a sense, there is a sense of purpose attached to waking up in the morning, doing my chores, blah, 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 and then going off. There's a way it's, it makes you have that achievement. So this is my honest advice to you. If your man is saying, don't walk, don't walk, you have to go and think very well. Because my question is, what would you... We have, you're still a young lady. You have like 30, 40, 50 years to live. So what would you be doing in those years? Baby. <laughs> so, I mean, so that when other ladies are talking about their achievement, when they are stepping up, so that you will also have something to point at. You would know that, okay, all of these years I have invested them in this. All of these years I have invested them in that. So even if he doesn't want you to do the regular 9 to 5, there should be a business, there should be something, not just sleeping and waking at home and going to the spa and, you know, even Jesus is still working. So I, I don't understand that. Don't work. Praise the Lord. So I, I'll, I'll be coming from the angle of... Um, okay, you can... Sir, yeah. just, okay, I think I have about two or three people. Just one perfect example. Yeah. My own family that I came out from. My uncle, most of you know him. He said his wife will not work, but for a particular time. Time, yeah. You know, the first 10 years of, he said he doesn't want a housemaid in mm. his house. The wife was in that in that marriage, mm. trained up three girls. Mm. In fact, the second one is having a 12th birthday mm. today. Mm. Now, it was just less than two years mm. she started business mm. when 
they were sure that they have raised their children to a particular Battle age level. and the elder can take care of the younger mm. now she is now supporting the wife so just know the reason and god will bless you <coughs> praise the lord yeah so that's in fact we are dealing with so many things that i i have here so and i i, I would like to point out these statistics yes you'll still you'll soon talk these statistics if you go and check you realize that there's a, a, a kind of at the beginning of one's career and if you look at people's career generally at the bottom you find more of of ladies especially this dispensation you find more of ladies when you get to the middle middle level it's more like 50 50 but when it comes to top management level the boardrooms when you get to the boardroom level you will discover that it's more like 80 20 80 percent for men 20 percent for women that tells you something that as you begin to grow, continue to grow there are some natural responsibilities that will fall upon women that will make them to retreat a little bit that will make them to sit back because they have dual responsibility home management is their core responsibility go and read the bible very well home management is the core of every woman is their core assignment it is not your responsibility to provide food it is not your responsibility to provide shelter it is not your responsibility to provide clothing for your family praise the lord these are the responsibility of men so but that does not mean that you should not work to support your husband praise the lord so that does not mean you should not work to support him so you can check this check out these statistics when you get to the boardroom level you find 80 20 bottom level especially in the banking industry oh my god you see men and women apply for the same role it's more like 70 30 70 women 70 percent for ladies 30 percent for guys why because banking will throw you into marketing and they know that women can talk more to opposite sex and and they have this this way of persuading people to give them money you can see that that's even a skill that you need to bring into your home persuade your husband to do what to collect things from her that persuasive spirit that you are using to collect money and bring to your company you can also apply it in your home to collect things from your husband that will satisfy you praise the lord hey okay uh, bro victor has been raising his hand since i want to he hear his question okay after him okay. Um, praise the lord church hallelujah my name is michael um and my question is very straightforward like how does a guy handle um, pressure from family and relatives um, about getting married when they believe that you are, appro you are approaching the stage they hate to get married and you are not making any move but um you know in the, in, in the country we live in now like um we live in a situation whereby you plan to finish school by maybe um 22 24 but you end up finishing a, um, an institution around 29 30 years and they're already disturbing you that oh you should be married even from the church of god we have the church of god that disturb their um their uh, members that are you not due for marriage how does one undo that kind of pressure brother i don't know you more than you know yourself neither does your father know you more than you know yourself do you understand me sincerely when you are not ready you are not ready praise the lord but that does not mean you should go and dwell in that comfort zone i'm not ready i'm not ready you got your first job you are not ready i'm not ready i'm not ready you made your first million i'm not ready second million you are not ready up to 15 million you are not ready then there's something wrong with you praise the lord praise the lord beyond money now what are other things that you need to are you emotionally prepared you know you've heard a lot of questions here a woman right women want things they want solutions to their problems instantly 
Praise the Lord. But men love to carry things, think, think it through. That if I do it this way, what will I get? If I do it that way, what will I get? So that's why, as a man, you have the responsibility to take decisions for your family. And if you are not emotionally prepared to do that, because there will be a lot of pressure. Won't you pay school fees? This is the kind of, if I, I don't want to go into that message. <laughs> you, this, this is the kind of school I want for my children. This is the kind of house I want us to, to rent. This is the kind of car I want us to buy. Because women, most times, and this is no offense, is reality. Women, most times, they think about the present and the near future. While men do more of, they are more futuristic. What happens to my family when I'm no more? Who's going to take care of them? A woman can earn 5 million naira now and spend 4.5 on their children. And the children will be glad. My mommy loves me. Mommy even loves me better than daddy. Mm. A man will never think like that. If you bring in 4.5 million now, if you bring in 5 million naira now, a man who enroll his children in a school of 100,000 naira per term. Praise the Lord. Because the assumption is that that 5.5 5, 5 million naira is the last that he will get. Although he's working to get more. But his assumption is that this is the last 5, 5 million naira that we have to spend. But a woman is all about what would they say? If my child is not, if other children are wearing fine shoes and my child is not wearing fine shoes, they carry money, go and buy shoes. It's until they get to the kitchen and they realize that, ah, oh, 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 as if you're a shoe. Praise the Lord. So, don't let them rush you into it. You have a lot of load to carry. I pray God will help you in the name of Jesus. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord, Church. Hallelujah. My, um, I want to make a contribution, not a question. And I want to address the first question about um, mood swings. You know, first of all, before you go into marriage, by divine revelation, you must first... Okay. Before you get into marriage, you know, you must first discover your purpose in life you know no i'm not you must first discover your your purpose in life you know and this is the here's the here's the thing with the mood swings that people experience in marriages right that mood swing you experience is actually the judgment of the lord coming upon you in hold on in requirement of that which has been apportioned to you as a person to do you know, so not when I say judgment, I mean the Lord questioning your spirit, you know, instructing you about something that was apportioned to you to do that you did not do. And so this revelation is what puts your spirit on that body, you know, and then you begin to experience that mood swing because now you are racing in your spirit to try as much as possible to meet up to yeah, I think I, I get what you're to saying. That expectation, yeah. you know. I get what you're saying. Praise the Lord. Okay, that will be the. Uh, this will be the second to the last question. So, after his question, we take one more and we wrap it up. Hey. Uh, praise the Lord. Uh, my question is, um, we're in a Gen Z world, right? Yeah, I don't and know. We, <laughs> and the Gen Zs, right? We spend seventy to eighty percent of our time mostly on social media. Now, the social media, most times, is not even in the real life. Mm. But what we see in the social media are what we used to judge mm. in real life. Mm. Talking about standards, the kind of money we should have, the kind of cars, the kind of this, the kind of that. Mm. So my question is, what's your advice for we Gen Z's? Because most times, we see crazy things on social media, sincerely, and we have used these things to like judge our opinions about things we see or things we should do. Yeah, that's my question. 
You would have used what? The decisions on decisions we take. It is on social media. You're asking if it is good. Like what we should do? What should we do as Gen Zs regarding Wait. social media and marriages? What you see on social media, should you use it to judge? Oh, okay. How do you escape? How do you escape? How do you escape? I'm looking for a social media person here. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. 99% of what is of social media is fake. Mm -hmm. Don't follow them. Oh. Now, if I want to apply on the social media now, I'm going to take four khaki. And I have one. They will go and borrow clothes. The clothes they are wearing, somebody sold for them to use firefight. So don't allow social media to guide you. The Bible says, do not confirm to the standard of the world. You confirm by the word of God. The word of God is true and life. All those celebrities you are following, some of them have died for city times. Mm. And there is nothing to worry them. So there is marketing. Mm. So that is what they are doing to add more followers like you. So please, don't follow social media. Follow the word of God. Thank God we have people that are married successful in our midst. If you have any challenge, ask people here. May God help us in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise okay. the Lord. Th this um, uh, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Now, social media has its own good part, and also it has its own negative part. Um, unfortunately, the negative part seems more appealing yeah. to a lot of people. So that's why they tend to watch. And um, okay, look at uh, all the different podcasts that are going on now. Yeah, a lot of people saying a lot of trash, and um, people will borrow data, share data, beg people to give them data just to watch such things. And um, truthfully, without being judgmental, if you compare the lives of people who are successful in industry, in ministry, and you compare it to the lives of all these glamour girls, it's, it's, it's like this. It's like heaven and hell. And that's the truth. It's like someone being in the US and someone being in uh, Kotonu. These girls or these people on this podcast, they don't have anything. Yeah. What they live on is just for the moment. And that's why whenever they have anything that shakes them, they don't have any shock absorber. They go down the drain. So let's, let's be careful. Social media, yes, there's a good part. But mostly when it comes to relationship, I beg you, don't take relationship from the social media. It will bring you down. Thank you very much, sir. Okay. One step more. Okay, yeah, yeah. Sorry, okay, quickly. So, um, I have a friend, right? Which led me to my first question. So, let's say you've lowered your standard, right? And you've gotten married. And in the first year, you're not happy. Then, along the line... You Sorry, meet... what do you call happiness? You know, happiness is relative. Happiness is based on your expectations. Uh -huh. the, like, you have an idea of Human beings are different. Yes. People will most rarely like not change in the nearest future. So what you get married to now is most likely what you end up with going forward. So th that was why I asked earlier about lowering standards. So I want to know your stance on. I know the church stands on divorce, right? But if your opportunity to meet happiness, right? You meet happiness along the line. You're married. Should you pursue happiness or remain unhappy? Thank you. Amen. Your question. Your question and your question, ma. So we take the question. Okay, praise the Lord. You said something about still settling down for the right guy. For less. I mean for the right guy. For less. For less. For hey. less. Okay. Most of the times we ladies. <laughs> oh, they are not so, we are sorry. We are sorry. Don't worry, I'll call Most of the times, we ladies, when we the reason why we are scared of settling with the wrong guy, with the lesser guy, with the hope that when they get rich in future, they will still be with us. But then, for example, I have this um, cousin of mine. She stayed with the guy. She enjoyed with him. Even our parents were aware of everything, I know. But immediately, the guy hits the jackpot. 
he left her and ran away and went to marry a white woman. So that is why we have this mentality in my family that we can never settle for a less guy. Because we can never, like, because we have this mentality that um, money reveals the, um, reveals the true nature of a guy. So what if he now gets um, rich and then he now sees all these small, small girls they feel that they will now want someone their standard. And we that has been growing with them, we are now nothing. They can't maintain us again because they feel they've seen everything about us and they don't want us. You get? Thank you, ma. Hey, sorry, I want to ask you a question. Are you not up to standard? Ah, oh, ah, this brother said. I don't like the kind of confidence I'm seeing. Okay, sir. Yeah, you're no problem. You can ask the question. She wants to. Okay, let her ask. Then you ask your question too. Don't worry. Praise the Lord. Please let somebody be putting down this question. So we will put them on our social media page. Let people discuss Praise because they are very Church. sweet questions. Um, mine is not a question. Mine is just a contribution. Okay. Based on what she said, that um been with the guy when does not have anything and now he has money he will leave you what i would say is that while you were with him were you also growing <laughs> that's it were you also growing were because you growing everybody has their standard that's why pastor said are you seeing the vision in him it's not about now it's about later if you're a chubby person, as the kind of person that you like slim, curvy ladies, and you yourself, you know that at the long run, I want to have that body also. You understand what I'm saying? Are you working towards it? Are you working towards the vision that, oh, my guy wants someone that is sexy, and you also want to be sexy? Do you just leave yourself? Oh, my husband, my guy must be rich, and you are praying away your life. Your time rapper, looking all... Oh, you're not looking attractive is a man is a man are you supporting yourself also in the relationship if he's growing you're praying for him be praying for yourself he's growing you're growing there's no way that he'll be wealthy and he's not seeing you looking attractive that he wants to leave you and go and meet another person it's not possible if he's saying that oh he's looking attractive you too, you're looking attractive. There's nothing outside that is not seen inside, my sister. Praise and the secondly, Lord. And secondly, my dear, marriage is work. Leave your qualification as a lady is not for you to work outside, for you to work in your marriage. Because you cannot be dumb and you think you can handle a home. Home is difficult. Hmm. It's work. Is your partner someone you can communicate with? Does he listen to you? Does he listen to you? Is Christ his head? Is Christ his head? Is Thank you very man? much, man. Thank you very much. Thank you. Good morning, church. I just have two things to say. The first one is contribution, while the second one is question. The first one is, if we are talking about standard. Okay, sorry. If we are talking about standard, yes, sir. You can decide to get married to a rich man. Maybe later on, something can happen and the rich man will come down. So if the, uh, nobody is praying for anybody's downfall, if something happens and the rich man comes, does it mean that the person is no longer understand that will you leave the marriage because the person is nowhere to do anymore? That's for that. Then the second one is, yes, a question now. The second one is, how do you, is it that if, in terms of getting married to, a, a lady or the lady getting married to a, a, a guy how do you know that this person is your wife because if you are saying that uh, we should get married to a christian everybody can be a christian but there is a particular person for you is it that if you say you pray you pray you pray there are some persons that they they got married through revelation i've seen some they will tell you that god spoke to them but later on something happened they will now you now start seeing so kind of they will not be like is it not god i heard what now happened Praise so the, the question Lord. is, how do you know? Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Your question. Okay. Yes, praise the Lord. 
I want to ask the question. I please ask the last okay. question. <laughs> okay. I will have just two questions. One is concerning... Um, we'll continue next week. Concerning work. If um, me, I believe that it's not good to be held, okay, to give your wife, your wife to be working secular work because one, we ladies, they have that ego. When they start working, definitely, I don't, I just want to, um, they have to also ask me if it's good or not. When they start working and they start making the money, money, um, more than the, the husband, that pride will now enter. Yes, I'm making money than you. And when you are talking, they talk. Is it times. a question or contribution? Uh, contribution. Okay, praise the Lord. Okay, Thank you. Okay, okay, sir. Thank okay, okay, let me now ask. Okay. Concerning um, you and your spouse, yes, this is the person that you want to get married. Everything is set. But one thing, when you start um, hearing the girls pass, yes, I did, I did this, I did that, I did that, I did that. But the past is so so heavy that ha, you you be you be scared. How can you handle? How can you handle? Handle the past. The of past, your, yes, of your wife. What kind of past? <laughs> okay, look, okay, 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 okay. Yeah. What this kind of house. past? Okay, this house. Let me now be open. Now you will hear past like when the girl you, something that uh, yes, I. So, so and so, I did the uh, three abortion that I did. So, so and so. And you now, when you are now meeting, will you be, will you be able to, to handle the marriage again? Will you be able even to say, I want to marry again? And you know that, yes, this is the girl you want to marry. You know that, yeah. But when you hear the past, that past like this, you have to run. Please, let's go home. Praise the Lord. Let's go home. Let's go home. Praise the Lord. We must praise the Lord. Um, please, guys, I implore you, I beg you, let your future spouse work. Please. Now, um, a lot of guys will say, oh, when my wife starts any more than me. Look, if you marry a godly woman, eh, hey, please, I don't want yes. That's how you say yes now. When the time comes, if you marry a godly woman and um, she's a serious person, no matter how much she earns more than you, the respect will still be there. Mm. As long as you yourself, you are not lazy, you are not folding your hands out. Now, women like guys, you might not be rich now, but they know that, look, this man has a lot of, has a lot of you know, things that is working on and things will still work out for him. And with prayer and faith, you know, they will go along with you. As long as that person is your wife and the person is godly. That is why it is necessary, you know, when we are growing up, uh, in, the, in the days of our forefathers, before they get married, they will go, they will go and check. investigate the family. That's number one. Number two, they go spiritual and check. Nowadays, people meet themselves, they don't investigate. Yeah. You don't know the brothers, you don't know the sisters, you don't know how the mother is in the environment where they live. People will just see themselves on the street and say, oh, I love you, I love you. You understand? So, a lot of things. And a man or a woman will never act outside the behavior of his family. Mm. He will always represent the kind of behavioral pattern of his or her family. So, I want us to understand that. And guys, let your women work. Because at a point in time in life, anything can happen. I always say that. Yeah. Anything can happen. And women, um, I know women have uh, pride, especially when it seems they are the one feeding the house. Mm. So you need, to, you need to have the fear of God so you can balance things. Yeah. And guys, please don't be lazy so that women will not show you the direction to your father's house. Thank you very much. <laughs> Amen. Please, bro, um, I will advise you, that mentality, please, I want you to erase it. Hmm? It's a slavery mentality. You understand that if women begin to walk, they'll grow bigger than you, you know. Mm -mm. Marriage is not a competition. It's not. It's not. I pray God to give us the wisdom. 
Praise the Lord. So we'll continue next week. Second question. Sorry. Uh, sorry, what your question? Remind me. I wrote down some questions here. I, uh, no, not uh, okay. Past. Oh, we'll talk about past. You, you, you spoke about. How do you know? Yeah. How do you know this is the person and all of that and all of that? Yes. That before marriage, everything looks good, or you saw you had a revelation and all of that. But in marriage, you realize that this person is bringing up a different pattern that you don't like. You see, many people, revelation, prophecy, or visions is to tell you what will be. Most revelations will not tell you how to get there. Do you understand that, sir? I can prophesy or see a vision that in the next few years, you will be the the director of CBN. As a director of CBN, maybe what you are doing presently, the only qualification you have is probably OND, and you are not doing anything about it. A time will come, that time for that manifestation will come, and it's not meeting anything in your hands. God is not a partial God. He will move it from that person and give it to another person. Praise the Lord. Likewise, in marriage, the fact that you had the revelation, she was fetching water, you are helping her to carry the water, or she's putting shoes in your legs and all of those things. And you say, oh, Sister NKG is the one. If you go for Sister NKG and you don't walk, what I mean by walk in marriage now, you don't manage your home, that home can break. The fact that you had the revelation before the marriage does not mean that there is no room for divorce because there is nothing that the devil does not attack. Do you understand, sir? So, marriage is work on both hands. And that is why something like this is coming up to teach us what we need to do, how we need to respond to situations. Nobody has a marriage that is just like your life. We don't know what's going to happen in the next few, few minutes or few years. But what you are doing, the way you are building up yourself, you say you are running away from things that are dangerous to your health. You are running away from, so that's the way it is. You have to not, nurture it. You have to groom it. You have to build it. That's why the Bible uses the word build. That a wise woman builds up a house. You have to build it. If you are not building it, nobody will build it for you and it can crumble. Do you understand? As a woman has a role to play, the man also has a role to play. If both of you decide not to play your roles, then the home will crash, regardless of who is seeing that vision. Praise the Lord. Please, we'll pick it up from there next week. I pray God will help us in the name of Jesus. I believe you have learned one or two things today. Amen. Let's be on our feet. I'm going to pray this prayer for yourself. Most of us, the reason we are afraid is because of the pattern that the marriage of our parents followed. If I tell some sisters here that you will marry a man like your father, some will say, God forbid. That's an evil pattern. And you are not mindful of these things. That's something that you need to work on and you need to pray against. The fact that your mom married somebody like your father that you do not like, it means there are tendencies that that is the kind of direction that you are also going. I want you to pray this prayer for yourself. See, evil family pattern. Beloved, pray louder. Say, evil family pattern. A sign to break down my marital journey. Your time is up. Da! In the name of Jesus, open your mouth and pray that prayer.
evil family pattern assigned to pull down my marital journey. Die, 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 die. In the name of Jesus, command them to die. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Say arrows of marital failure fired into my life. Back fire in the name of Jesus. Open your mouth and shout it. Arrows of marital failure fired into my life. Back fire. 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 In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Beloved, it is important that you know who you marry. There are some men, if you marry them, your hands will never count money. Likewise, there are some women, if they come into your home, you will be moving in and out of jobs. You will never have job because they must be the one to feed the family. Do we understand? That is the reason why prayers is very important when you are choosing a life partner. Close your eyes and pray for yourself. Many people marry their own enemy. A man that was doing well before. Although these women will look good. If in the open, it's possible you even meet them in the church. They will look good outside and even inside. But some of them, they are carrying evil load on their heads. As a result of satanic dedication from where they are coming from. Close your eyes and pray for yourself like this. Say powers. Beloved, I want you to get angry in the spirit. Say powers. That wants me to marry my enemy. You are a liar. Da! In the name of Jesus. Oh yes, oh yes, oh yes, oh yes, oh yes. Open your mouth and shout it. Command them to die, 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 die in the name of Jesus.